So Steel Series has finally released a revision of the Apex Pro TKL keyboard that they released back in the summer of 2019. And this is a pretty decent revision, if I do say so myself. It is pretty expensive though, coming in at $250 for the wireless version that's now available and $189 for the wired variant. But there are a little bit of notable features that I would like to mention that they did improve on and then a few other uh, setbacks that I will definitely say that are a part of this keyboard that you will have to uh, be okay with if you choose to purchase this option. A USB-C dongle if you get the wired version. They will also come with this magnetic wrist rest. You do have the OLED screen again present on this keyboard so you can adjust a few settings, volume, things like that. And then you also have a playback button and then you also do feature double shot PBT keycaps on this keyboard as well. And I'm glad that still series updated that. I hope that they never, ever, ever use those horrible ABS keycaps ever again on any of their future releases. It is also featuring the squared off design that has an aluminum top plate right here that's cold to the touch and then a plastic frame on the rest of the keyboard as well. You have these adjustable feet. Personally, I can't use the second level of adjustable feet unless I'm using the magnetic wrist rest that is included as well. And then of course on the wireless version, not only do you have the 2.4 gigahertz connection, but you do also also feature Bluetooth wireless connection as well. The first issue that I have with this keyboard that I thought the SteelSeries was going to update is the fact that they did not add OmniPoint switches on the entire keyboard. Let me show you. So right here, if I go ahead and pull off one of these keycaps, and I'll also pull off a keycap over here by these modifiers, as well as your function row, you see that you only have OmniPoint switches on the 60% portion of the keyboard, and then the rest of these switches, you will have a red style MX linear switch of some sort. And I'm just really disappointed that after three years, pretty much, why can't we have all OmniPoint switches on the entirety of the keyboard, especially with the pricing of the keyboard being as high as it is. Like this is really expensive. And if I'm buying a keyboard that is, that's this expensive, I want it to have all uniform switches. There's no reason for the keyboard not to come with the same switch across the entirety of the PCB layout. Like that's just the way that it should be. And in the future, this better not happen again. Like there's no reason for this to be this expensive. $250 plus tax and shipping and whatnot, and have to deal with a mix match keyboard because that's what it is. It's mix match and it shouldn't be that way. Next, the OLED screen has much more limited functionality than the previous one did. The previous one, you could change your lighting presets and everything without having to go and set up profiles to save to your keyboard on this little OLED screen right here. Like you can still adjust volume, you can hit mute, you can play pause right here. And then when you press and hold this little media button, it will pull up the menu, you go to illumination. And the only option for you to choose is the brightness. And that's all that you can adjust as far as the color profiles. Cause quite frankly, I didn't really use the uh, OLED screen for anything else. Like you could use it for the actuation if you wanted to adjust it. This is another good feature to use. If you want to set it to the minimum of 0.2 millimeters or the maximum of 3.8 millimeters, that's great to be able to adjust on the keyboard. But the fact that I have to go through the Steel Series application and set up profiles and things like that if I want to change the RGB settings directly on the keyboard when you use to be able to customize it right on the keyboard itself without having to use the SteelSeries GG software or previously the SteelSeries engine software, why don't we go back in time and take away a feature for no reason that was a good feature? Like, did you guys run out of memory on the PCB or the a couple megabytes of storage that it had or something like what's going on with that i truly don't understand why just such a basic feature that was available before got taken away and the price is also higher especially if you go with the wireless version yeah you're getting a new feature but it's still a lot of money for a keyboard next the design of this keyboard in my opinion seems significantly worse than the previous version of the apex pro tkl that previous version looked so good. Like part of the reason why it stayed on my desk for a really long time is just the fact that it looked like a premium keyboard that you spent a lot of money on. This does not. This looks generic and it does not look any different than SteelSeries cheaper offerings. And I understand that you guys wanna have uniform design language and whatnot, but why does this $150 keyboard look the same as this $250 keyboard? The build is basically the same. Like this has an aluminum top plate. This has an aluminum top plate, plastic case, plastic case, same adjustable feet, which is fine. And the USB port in the same area and whatnot. But why does this not look nearly as good as the previous one? And it doesn't sound as good either.
that's the other thing that really makes me upset is the fact that the keyboard space as a whole has been going in such a great place that even manufacturers of these higher end gaming brand keyboards have been noticing the things that people are doing in the custom and more enthusiast keyboard space and started implementing things to make their keyboards from the factory sound a little better. I don't think SteelSeries has gotten the memo because this thing, it sounds, in my opinion, worse than the previous one. And for my final complaint, I also wanna mention the fact that SteelSeries does have a lot of new things that are available now, and you do have really nice RGB lighting on the Apex Pro TKL. I'm assuming that the wired one is gonna be the same, but this is the Apex 7 TKL that we reviewed recently, and for whatever reason, the RGB experience on this keyboard, the brightness, the saturation is significantly worse. And if I have to spend an extra $50 just to get better lighting, when before on previous SteelSeries keyboards, that really wasn't the case. Like all the lighting from bottom of the range to the top of the range was very good. Why is the lighting now even a separation of your premium products? but they both equally sound as bad. Like it, I'm, I'm honestly like, I'm not really impressed with the sound of the new SteelSeries keyboards either. The features, the functions, experience as far as the performance, all very good things. I really don't have anything bad to say. Like these brand new OmniPoint switches that have the adjustable actuation with a couple extra distances, they perform incredibly well. And it also competes directly with Wooting. Wooting has a minimum of 0.1 actuation and SteelSeries has a minimum of 0.2 millimeters of actuation. But you also get a wireless keyboard if you really wanna have a wireless gaming keyboard. With that being said, is it worth paying a ton of money more when more or less this is the same area and size that the Wooting is. And the Wooting has a couple extra tricks up its sleeve as well that quite frankly are just better. And this keyboard in stock form sounds worse. So it makes it really hard to recommend the Apex Pro Mini, the Apex Pro TKL, especially when I'm now realizing that the new design that we've seen in the Apex Pro Mini has been carried over to the bigger keyboards. I'm really not a fan of it. That's really largely what this boils down to is that the design feels cheap. The sound is not good. The performance and the features are both great, except for the fact that the OLED screen is not limited. Overall, it's a really hard decision for me to say, yeah, go ahead and spend your hard earned $250 on this keyboard. It's a very unique product, so it's very hard to rate, but that doesn't mean that the value proposition completely goes out of the window because it's a unique product. Like it's still not unique enough where the other competition is irrelevant. So if this board is to continue in its current condition, I think that the Apex Pro TKL wireless needs to have a serious price adjustment. Like the wireless version needs to be like 210 to $200 max personally or it needs to go on sale asap and then the wired variant especially for having worse build quality than the previous one as far as the design and everything goes um, i think that that one should cost like 160 dollars like a 40 to 50 dollar price difference between the wireless and the wired version and then also i'll throw in the apex 9 tkl again as well because this one is in a pretty unique space as well as far as having the dual actuation function for these linear switches. But I thought that these were normal Gateron uh, optical hot swap switches and they aren't. So I think that the pricing of this one needs to be adjusted as well because they're proprietary Gateron switches. You can't swap in your own optical switches. So this keyboard should be at like $120. This is your entry level, kind of customizable, optical, super fast, performance oriented gaming keyboard. And then you bump up to the big daddies when you go with the Apex Pro TKL for like $160. And then you bump up to the even bigger daddy, the wireless version for $200. That's what I think the price and structure should be. And that just seems a lot more fair. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think of the Apex Pro TKL, the new version. Do you like the new design better or do you prefer the old design and the old sound profile as well? Because in my opinion, I think that the old one really was significantly improved. Like, I think it was really, really nice compared to everything that SteelSeries had released previously. And this keyboard, I just do not feel the exact same way, unfortunately. Like this feels like a downgrade in some respects. An upgrade in a few, but a downgrade in most. But that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoy, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as well. I wanna thank you guys again for watching Too Much Tech. And if you are interested in this keyboard, I will have a link in the description below, the Apex Pro the Apex Pro TKL wireless, and also the Apex 9. If you are interested in that, I will leave my full review of that keyboard as well. So you guys can see my opinions on the Apex 9 TKL. But thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next video.